Okay, I want to take you to a verse that has been on my mind for some very months. And even since I was doing the live stream several months ago, this verse has you know seemed to not be able to escape my mind. And it's Matthew 24, uh, verse 11. Now, I want to keep in mind, we go to the first part of Matthew 24. The disciples came to Jesus. Lord, tell us, uh, what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Now, Jesus, from verses uh, 4 all the way through uh, Matthew 24, he, he gives many warning signs of his coming. Now, verse 11, he says, that many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. Now, I'm a little bit stumped as I look around on social media and listen to professing Christians. And you know, you have to, we're just in a time where you have to use the term professing Christian because everyone and their cat, dog, cow, and everything else are claiming to be Christians. But it just seems like a lot of folks are having a hard time. Well, number one, let me stop before I make the statement. Number one, everyone, for the most part, will say they believe that we are in the end times. Okay, so you say you believe that we are in the end times. So do you believe that Jesus' words are true then, I would ask? Because if you do believe that Jesus' words are true, uh, there should not be a hard time believing what Jesus said in verse 11. He said, let me say it again. We read it again here. It's not Marcus's words. These are actually Jesus' words, right? That Marcus didn't write the Bible. Marcus didn't write Matthew 24 or any other part of the scripture. Verse 11, many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. Now, I find humor in the fact that many people are having trouble identifying the many false prophets that have arisen. They believe that we're in the end, that we're in the end times. They believe that. They just don't believe that there are many false prophets because when people like say Dana Coverstone comes out and gives a detailed prophecy of what he said God told him and then it doesn't come to pass these professing Christians who say they love Jesus don't seem to be able to identify that as falsely prophesying. Marcus Rogers, Chris Yoon, and on and on and on we go with these very likable, charming, charismatic individuals who come on camera and entertain you and give you goosebumps and chills and the arms and the hair standing up on your arms. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Now, it comes down to this. You believe your false prophet who comes on camera and gives the prophecies about Russian troops in the streets and so forth and so on. You believe the rapture dates, but you don't believe Jesus' very words. Many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. You say you believe that we're in the end times, so you must be able, if you say you truly believe, then you have to be able to identify the false prophets, the many that are around us, those have, who have, ar have arisen. A very interesting statistic that I keep mentioning and bringing up here is that in the last 10 plus years here on social media, Zero, zero percent accuracy on prophetic words. You can't, you literally cannot make this up. Imagine going into a restaurant for 10 years. This is your favorite restaurant for 10 years. They can't get the order. It's on the menu. They can't cook it right. Now, I've been around cooks that put something out two or three times. They got it wrong two or th Look, you get it wrong the third time. Now, it's like, dude, you need to go sit down. But imagine this happening for 10 straight years. They don't get your order right. And you keep coming back to the restaurant 
and singing their praises. This is a lit- this is literally the absolute insanity that we're seeing of the end times. We're 10 plus years of false prophecies and false prophetic words, 0% accuracy, and the followers continue to enable it. Enable it. Now, which points me to the second half of what Jesus said here in verse 11. Number one, he said, many false prophets will arise, shall arise. That's number one. But then he went and said, and shall deceive many. Now, the fact that you can't identify the Marcus Rogers, the Chris Younes, the Dana Coverstones, and all the other charming, cute, charismatic individuals, the fact that you cannot identify them as false prophets shows how much deception that you're in. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says that because they received not the love of the truth as to be saved, that a great delusion and deception was put up on them. In other words, you're rejecting God's word. You're accepting per, quote unquote prophetic words, which are I'm calling pathetic words. And I'm all about the, the uh, prophetic. I shared that community post about how when Esther and I, we were going through our marriage trials, how the Lord sent three different individuals with prophetic words. And all three of those prophetic words came to pass in my marriage. I didn't search out those prophetic words. I didn't seek folks to, to, to speak the prophetic over, over me. I sought Jesus. And see, this is the thing. When we go seeking other things instead of Jesus, it becomes idolatry. And this is what happened in 2 Kings uh, chapter 1. The son of Ahab sought out the uh, soothsayers of that time. And then the Lord interjected and spoke to him and said, because you have sought them, you will surely not leave this bed. You will surely die. So, so many of you, you're, you're, you're searching after soothsayers. You're searching after Calgon, come take me away versus searching Jesus. Today is the day to turn away from this idolatry. This is the same very thing. Thing, the same very sin that plagued the house of Israel, the worship to Baal, tolerating this Jezebel spirit and many in the church are unfortunately uh, lapping it up and are enjoying this entertainment. But unfortunately, this is entertainment that is leading to damnation. You know, Peter said in Second Peter chapter two that these false teachers they were born to be destroyed. They were born to be killed. I don't want to be named among folks who are using the name of the Lord for my own personal gain. No, Lord, I want to point folks to you, to your word, to your truth. I don't want to be using you as a prop for my own personal gain, for my own selfish fleshly wants and desires. Lord, I want to uh, glorify and magnify you. I want to magnify your name. I encourage us all to do the simple thing. This is not hard. This is not rocket science. To search the word of God, to spend time with God, to get in the prayer closet, because we are surely living in the last days and we're watching the narrow road continually get more narrow more narrow and more narrow each day we go.